John is with us in Orlando. Hey, John, how are you? Hi, how you doing? Great, man. Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, well, I, um, I'm i going to be uh, with my brother. We're going to buy a furniture business that my brother works at. Uh, the, the guy that owns it wants to retire, and he pretty much is just wants to sell it for what he has in inventory. Um, but he wants a, a down payment on the inventory of $75,000, um, which I was going to pay that aspect, and me and my brother were going to be partners in this business. But my problem is I'm trying to figure out what the best way to get my $75,000 back, but we're also still partners. So I wasn't quite sure if I should put it on a payment plan or if I should pay my – what would be the best way to, to take that investment back? Because my brother's kind of bringing in the sweat equity, and he's going to be running the business majority, the majority of the time. But uh, I, I just don't know how to go about it. I wanted to talk with you about it. So you're an absentee investor of 75000 into the business. He's putting nothing in it, and he's going to run it. Yeah, I would say I'm not total absentee because I'll be helping with, uh, you know, the purchasing and doing a lot of the books and, and, and handling it on that end. And uh, so I, I don't know if I'll be totally absent, but I think it would probably be safe as maybe like a, a 70-30 split as far as the amount of work that needs to be done. Okay. But the day-to-day, -day, he'll be doing well, the most fair way to do this, the proper way to do this, is a little bit complicated, and you may not go for it, but I'll outline it for you, okay? I would put a job description on what each of you are going to be doing, and if you are going to hire someone to do what that person is doing. He's the general manager. You're the bookkeeper slash purchaser part-time, right? And uh, I would say, okay, that job, if we were to hire someone to do that, would pay X and the other job would pay Y and I would pay you guys out of the business for the work you're doing first, mm -hmm. just like you had a job there. Okay. Okay. Then whatever profits are left, I would put a hundred percent of that back in your pocket until your 75,000 is returned. Okay. Do you think also, and that's another thing is out of, let's say his inventory is a quarter million dollars. Um, so we're going to have a balance and he's going to want a percentage of that, you know, to be paid within, you know, maybe two years. Um, and he's, he's doing it, you know, as far as what kind of profit go, is so. this business making? Um, well, I would say they're doing maybe half a million dollars a year. So I think he's pulling in maybe out of profit, maybe 125, maybe something, maybe 150. Okay, I don't like people investing money and stuff when they say maybe I think. Yeah. You don't we know what you're doing. Got, yeah, we haven't gotten the full, you know, the open books situation. I know what their margins are, and I know, like, what their average sales yeah. are, and I know what their overhead well, don't agree, is. You know, get, so get, get into the books that, before yeah. you make any decisions. But, uh, okay, that's fine if we say, all right, we're going to give him 50% of the profits until he gets the balance. And we're going to give me 50% of the profits until I get up to 75. Okay. And, I, I, and after your 75 is returned, I'd give him 100% of the profits until you get him out of your life. Because then there's yeah. no investor in the thing. It's completely free and clear. You got your 75 back. You he got his money out. Then there's profits. Then how are you going to split those profits? 50-50? Well, I, I mean, I'd like to be, yeah, I'd like to be 50-50 with him. I think that's the, the fairest way to go if we're doing this together. Okay. All right. Well, then you would continue to make your income for the job you do, which then, you know, obviously, like you were paying us, an employee would lower the amount of profit, obviously, not by a lot, but by whatever that job pays. And um, and then you'd split the profits 50-50 after that, you for being the investor, him from having brought the sweat and the opportunity to the table to start with. Um, yeah, that, that all makes sense. Now, can I can I step in a little bit further into the weeds with you? Yeah, sure. Great. Okay. A couple of things that are danger areas that you need to cover. Uh, one is you guys need to have a very clear relational understanding up front that when we're at work, he's the general manager, you're the purchasing agent and part-time bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. You use your general manager hat and voice and bookkeeper hat and voice 
not your brother voice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the number one of my concerns as well. But. Yeah. Well, the way uh, you yeah, do it is I, you respect you respect the end, person. You know, my mouth. Yeah, you don't you don't have two brothers on the floor of the furniture thing fighting like they're nine year olds, uh, and the rest of the employees watching, and then wonder why you can't keep good people. Mm-hmm. So you guys have to have a respect for each other. Uh, I'm the CEO of Ramsey Solutions. Rachel Cruz is a Ramsey personality. My daughter. And when she's in this office or we're working on business items, she treats me like the CEO and I treat her like a Ramsey personality, like I would a John Deloney or like I would a Christy Wright. I treat them, her with the same dignity. I don't use my dad voice on her and she doesn't roll her eyes like a petulant teenager. <laughs> right? Correct. And so yeah. you've got to get that relational thing down. That's item number one. You need to work on that. That's a big deal. And you guys need to sit and talk that through. You may even want to write out a little bit of a narrative that you're both in agreement to just for clarification on how you're going to do that. And when you, you know, yeah, we, we'll, we can we'll argue about football that. over Thanksgiving dinner, but we're not going to have, you know, a big brother fight here. The problem with a 50 50 business is it's a two headed monster and nobody's in control. If you if you're going to split the ownership of the business fifty fifty, after your stock after your five thousand seventy five thousand is returned. Now area number two of concern, do a detailed in depth written with a lawyer partnership agreement, or don't do this deal. And you have you have to cover all of the possible negative things that can happen, and most of them begin with a D. Divorce, death, disability disinterest. I'm no longer interested. Default. I just refuse to work, but I'd like to keep all the money. Uh, yeah. Drug use. Uh, what would be the best kind of lawyer? Uh, what would you just a general, a, gen- a general find? business practice, a lawyer that has a business practice. They're used to putting together. It's called a general partnership agreement. And what you cover is the negatives because you don't yeah. want to be in business with his wife. If he dies, Mm-hmm. Period. Even if you love her and she think you think she's awesome, that's not the that's not what you're signing up for. So what happens if he dies? Well, you probably need key man insurance on both of you, life insurance, term life insurance that buys her out of his half if he dies. It leaves you mm-hmm. that you're the owner of the policy, but it's used to make her to pay her. You get the money to buy her out, and that's preset ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And you can preset all the, you know, that that's a normal process. And this is how you end up speaking to your brother still when you're 90 instead of hating each other. Because you have a plan <laughs> for all the downsides. You have a way to respect each other in the operation of this. Because this is fraught with danger, this whole endeavor. There's a lot of downsides to this if you don't do it right. Family business can be wonderful, but uh, it can also be cray-cray. And uh, in studying family businesses over the years, I have noticed that the family business is never more functional than the family is. To the extent the family is dysfunctional, the family business is screwed. And two brothers that are, you know, obviously you like each other, you wouldn't be talking about this, but there are those times when you get under each other's skin because you're brothers. That's how it works. And uh, to, how are you going to manage manage that conflict? And how functional are you in handling conflict with each other? That's going to affect the business. It's going to destroy the business, or it's going to cause it to prosper. And we we work with this, that here at Ramsey every day. We work hard on it to be able to keep things moving. That's a great question you asked. Thank you. A lot of different things, a lot of ground covered there for a bunch of you listening on things to do. Um, not a big fan of partnerships, but if you're going to do one with your brother, that's how you do it.